Welcome to the Kicker Tech Force. In the past, it was really easy to upgrade your factory audio system. All you had to do was swap out the stock speakers, maybe change out the head unit, add a subwoofer and an amplifier, and you were good to go. Well, all that has changed. With today's newer vehicles, they're employing a sophisticated computer-based audio software called DSP. DSP, otherwise known as Digital Signal Processing, modifies the signal to work better with the speakers that they've installed. Now this is great if you don't plan on upgrading your audio system, but even if you just want to change out your speakers, that factory EQ curve that they've altered to make sound better with the stock speakers may make your better, more accurate aftermarket speakers sound even worse than the stock speakers did. This isn't good. So here at Kicker, we've introduced a line of products called the Key Line. Now the Kicker Key products are designed to make installation with these newer OEM radios a snap. What the key amplifiers do is they analyze the signal coming out of the factory radio or amplifiers and they retune that to match up to any system possible. Now, the key 180.4 and the 200.4 are designed to modify the stage. It's going to make it sound more natural by changing the time alignment, the equalization, and the output level of each of the four channels. But if you really want to maximize your bass response, you need one of the Kicker Key 500.1 amplifiers. A lot of OEM makers are taking some of the bass out of the stock audio because it's not going to work well with the stock speakers. It may damage them. So they want to make sure you do not blow up your stock speakers so they're going to take that low bass out of your factory system. If you don't have a key 500.1 on your OEM radio, you're not going to get all the bass you're looking for. It's just not going to sound right. So as you can see with this RTA graph, we're playing paint noise to the factory head unit, but measuring its output, you're going to see a little bit of a bass bump above 50 hertz, and you're going to see it start to gradually roll off as it gets even lower. This is not what we want to see. We want a nice flat frequency response so you have a nice smooth bass line to start your audio upgrade. So now let's look at the other switches and dials that make this amplifier the only choice for upgrading your bass in your audio system. As we look at the left side of the Key 501, we see the power inputs the ground, switched input, and 12 volt battery lead. The final connections on this amplifier are the speaker outputs. This is where you're going to connect your kicker subwoofer or any one of the many loaded kicker subwoofer enclosures that are going to fit your application for that perfect bass. On the right side of the amplifier, you'll see the key button. This turns the processor on and off. You have a high pass crossover, which will remove some extremely low, possibly harmful frequencies from your subwoofers. This will be very important to set this correctly with an infinite baffle or a ported enclosure. You have a low pass crossover to tune the output style of your bass. The last dial on the top row is the bass boost. If you still need even a little bit more bass, feel free to turn this up just a little bit to give you that extra thump you're looking for. Next, you have the gain match LED and that will be explained in the owner's manual. That will help you match the gain of the amplifier perfectly to the output of your factory head unit. You can also add a remote bass sublevel control. This plugs into the terminal socket on the far right side of the key amplifier. On the bottom row, we have an input switch. This will tell the amplifier, do you want to turn on from the speaker lead input, or do you need a switch 12 volt from the ignition key to turn the amplifier on or off? The signal input harness will accept 10 volts from an RCA input for an aftermarket head unit. If you prefer, you can cut the RCA ends off and run speaker wire right into the key amplifier. When you do this, the key amplifier's input will handle up to 400 watts of power from any source, factory or aftermarket. The last switch on the amplifier will denote whether you're going to use the RCA input or use a speaker level input. And finally, you have the gain matching dial. Once again, follow the procedure in the owner's manual with the proper setup tunes and you will set this amplifier to work perfectly with your OEM head unit. Now you've seen all the controls on this key amplifier, you'll want to hook this amplifier up and follow the setup instructions in the owner's manual to make sure it's set up properly. You'll have to download the test tones on the support tab of kicker.com. Once you do that, this amplifier is ready to fine tune your bass to give you all that output that you're looking for. Remember that initial graph we showed you of the bass roll off? This is the picture of what it looks like after it's been corrected. As you can see, it's flattened out the bass response, taken the bump out, and restored that crossover that takes the low bass out. This is the way your music should sound. Now that you've seen how cool this kicker key amplifier really is, and you've got it set up and tuned properly, you'll want to push the key button on the end of the amplifier to turn that processor on and off to hear what a difference it really makes. 
Make sure you guys check this amplifier out at your favorite online retailer or go visit your local authorized kicker dealer to audition this amplifier in person. I think you're going to love it. Stay tuned for more kicker how-to videos. See you soon.